first film that comes to your mind that begins with the letter F? Fart Head. No, Fargo. Really? First film that comes to your mind with the letter B? <sighs> Babylon just came to my mind. Bib, um, uh, Baby Driver. And Z, Zoolander. Zoolander, because you said it. And Q. Quest for Fire. That's a throwback. What about S? Suck it. Speed. Star Wars. Oh. Yeah, let's go through the whole alphabet. Anyways. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid <laughs> I'm Rick. You can follow That's a fun game. <laughs> Just go A to Z. First movies that come to mind. I went from your anus to your butt. Whoa. Hi, this is Chian Vikram. Hi, Vikram. Hi, Vikram. Today we got a Vikram uh, interview. Uh, this was for Tangalan. This is by IMDb. IMDb actually. Did awesome. This, uh, I never got sent this uh, until just recently. That's fantastic. Uh, and this is his journey, his challenges, oh, and more. Bring it on. Uh, I don't know why we didn't get Dang, am I IMDb, looking forward to that. IMDb interview by Vikram. And look look how cool he looks. By the way, for how those cool of you who looks. are not aware, we'll just help you out. You may not know. IMDb is the internet movie database. And for a lot of years now, it has been the place where you can verify what's going on in the entertainment industry. Not so much Particularly for film and TV. Not so much for India, but it's getting better. It's predominantly been Hollywood. And it's become, you know, it's a way for folks in the industry to not only know what's going on, but to keep tabs and make sure that someone's credits are legitimate. Because if you have a legitimate credit, it will be on IMDb because you can't put that credit on there. They put them on and therefore your resume better match your IMDb credits. And if you have IMDb Pro, which you pay for, that allows you to see a lot of information about the industry, contact information, the status of projects that are filming. And it's it's a huge resource for everybody in the industry here for many, many years. So not a plug, just information. Here like, we go. Who's IMDb? Hi, this is Chian Vikram, and I'm on IMDb for icons only how would you describe your career to those watching from around the world i would call it a story of a man chasing a dream i've always wanted to be an actor from when i was in my third grade doing different roles i've always been fascinated by doing something that's out of the box or something that's not you know run of the mill i had a long struggle of uh, about 10 years i did malayalam films i did telugu films i did tamil films they're all from three different states and i was waiting for my big break which happened with a movie called sedu with a director called uh, bala which was a trend setter of sorts and that put me on the map and it was critically acclaimed and since then i've been worked with really good directors and uh, i've experimented with a lot of films with a lot of characters i try to physically embody my character which means i can put on weight i will lose weight i i like playing with my physique that way and at the same time, my style of acting is I like to be so immersive that every film I would like to laugh different, talk different, dance different, walk different, stand different. And I try to become a character and that get, excites me a lot. And I've been blessed with really great directors and story writers who have come up with some amazing scripts like Sedu, Pitamagant, I, Aparijit. It's been a very uh, interesting journey for me. And I'm really honored that IMDb thought that I was fit enough to be on the show. And here I am. And what do you consider as your greatest achievement? When I was in college, I had gone to do a play called Black Comedy by Peter Schaffer. We started off with people booing us because the whole play would be in darkness. The whole stage was in darkness. And when the lights come on, it's like the lights go off. And then we start walking around in the darkness. So that's the play. For the first 10, 15 minutes, it would be in darkness. So we were booed. And then after the 15th minute, the half the audience started saying shh, shh while the other half was booing. And then they started getting involved and then they started laughing and it became such a huge hit. We were so happy. And then I met with an accident on that night and I was bedridden for three years. I had what? 23 surgeries. The doctor said, you'll never be able to walk again. But then I had this dream of being an actor and I had to become an actor. So the doctor said, you can't walk, but I decided to run. So I, I tried swimming. I tried everything. I was in crutches for a year and I got back only because of my love for cinema and acting. I and I've no always idea. believed that, um, you know, make your hobby your profession and you don't have to work one day in your life. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not working. I'm just enjoying every minute of my life on this planet. Which role changed you wow. the most? I would love to say no it's Tangalan right now, which would be the order of the day. But I think almost all my films have 
changed me in some way. It's like you can never be the complete actor. You can never be that. You know, cinema changes every year. And I've, since I've been here for so many decades, I've seen the school of acting change. Like it was very dramatic. Then it became, you know, not so dramatic. And now it's like the director is like, you don't act. Just be there. I did a film called Devatri Magal. Uh, which is like a takeoff of I Am Sam, where mm. I'm differentially able. We had a shot in the middle of uh, nowhere. I mean, it was a, a bus terminus where you have lots of buses and you have lots of passengers. And they wanted a shot of me lost in that area. And they sent bodyguards with me and said, "No, we'll 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 monitor the shot." I said, "No, don't do that. Just keep the camera somewhere. And let me just walk through the crowd." What was very strange is I walked through a crowd. I addressed. I spoke to everybody, trying to tell them. I mean, I want to go to this place. Can you help me? And not one person dis. Recognize Vikram because all they had to do was look at me, and they would have known it's me. But nobody wanted to look at me. They were looking away. Like there were people who abused me, there were people who pushed me, and that—that's when I realized it dawned on me. Like I mean, think of their lives. It's—it's—it's—it's it's, it's, it's so easy for us to just look the other way, or it's so easy for us to ridicule, so easy for us to look down on people like that. Are we giving them that support that people want? Are we giving them that mm. understanding or that love that dawned on me? That it's, I mean, when you do characters like this, somewhere you just strike a chord, and there'll be that one scene or moment where it happens. It happened then. Oh my god! I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> What is the story behind your nickname, Chian? <laughs> See, I had this long struggle. For me, it was Sedu was the culmination of all my dreams. It was like I want to be an actor, but I want to be an actor who's recognized. There's this film. Uh, called Sarva Sundaram, where he's a waiter and he becomes a very rich person. But in his house, he'll have his uh, uniform hanging on the wall to remind him where he came from. So I felt Chian was something like that because nobody knew me as Vikram, though I'd been there for so many years because they didn't know me as an actor. And once the movie came out, people started calling me Chian, and I kind of liked that name, and it it had a different ring to it. Mm. Was there a role you wish you had played during your dubbing days? Every every one of them, every <laughs> one of them. It's it was a time when I was trying to get a good break between three languages, and I decided that I needed the money to put food on the table, and that's why I did dubbing. When I couldn't walk, I decided that I'll try being a singer. If not, I'll be a photographer, I'll be a lightman, I'll be an assistant director, anything in any capacity, just to be in cinema because I love cinema so much. So when dubbing came along, I realized that here was a way of me getting a few extra bucks. It wasn't the much, but I could do this. I was telling someone recently, even when people used to call me at home. Every time I picked up the phone, I would never say hello. I'll change my voice, say hello, or I'll say hello, hello, or hello. You know, like I'll constantly be playing with people because I wanted to practice. And this dubbing was like that. I and I worked with really good directors like Mr. Shankar and uh, Kadir. I mean, the, all the films I did were like high-profile films. So though I was a huge integral part of the movie, though they couldn't see me, they could hear me. For myself, I changed my voice in every movie. Like in Tangala, and I'm talking as Kardeen, which is like he says, "Sengode." Uh, like his voice is very different, and it's live sound where I had to talk in that way. And the other character has a very high pitched voice. I can do different characters. All these things I learned in dubbing. I feel that everything in life, in some way, contributes to your learning process or the learning curve. And I thought dubbing was my most useful t- tool till date. Which physical transformation of yours was the most challenging? See, I did a film called Sami Square, which didn't fare too well at the box office. I had to play a younger version of what I did in the first part, so I actually made myself look younger and I became leaner and fitter. Like it was a challenge for me to do that. I, I, I like doing that. Having said that, let me say, say do. There's a particular moment when I get beaten up and I lose my memory and I go through a phase where I had to lose a lot of weight. I'm in a mental asylum, and what I go through forms the rest of the story. And even after I'm treated and I come out and I find I've lost my love, I go back to that asylum because I'd rather be there than alive. To do that sequence, I used to have just one roti or one carrot juice and uh, one egg white through the day, nothing else. And I used to walk to the location and walk back to lose weight. So I I would push myself to extremes like that. But mm. eventually, they all helped me in my characters. It is not about <laughs> looking different. It's about becoming becoming a role. And today, if I can say, okay, I did this role or I did that role, and I look different, I act different, it was because of my transformations. They all helped me. What was your most challenging day from the sets of Thangalan? <laughs> no, I'm calling it the most challenging, not because of the one scene. Because the whole movie was like that. There is no one scene which is like normal. Almost every sequence was shot as one single shot. The whole scene will be one shot. So there's no resting between shots. Like if there are five people in a shot. You take a shot. You take a group shot. Then you go for close up where the others can just sit and chill and come back. It doesn't happen. You go there in the morning and you work, 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 work till twenty, thirty takes. And then lunch break will be about three o'clock. And it's hot. And then we move into the night sequences which used to be freezing. It was out there breathing the elements, and that's how it was. And no slippers. 
and I'm just wearing a loin cloth. We had fights. We we had lots of tussles and pushes, and the whole film is a very physical film. Even uh, romantic scenes were shoving and pushing and grabbing, and you know it was like that. So you, we were constantly getting hurt. I mean, if you see the trailer or you see the film, you'll understand how each frame was like that. And the fact is, I used to do makeup for five hours every day to look oh. like that character. And then I go to wow. the location and they'll just plaster mud. And that'll cake on you, and you know what happens to mud when it cakes. It's itchy, and you, you you're just pulled out of your comfort zone, and you're thrown into one one mess, and then you perform. So it was in every Helps sense of the word, it was the most difficult. And My I don't goodness. know if I can do another film which is like as hard or as Tamil. What does success mean to you? Success is. Are you happy? Like people will say, yeah, all you need is money and you will get anything in the world. You can be happy, but then that's not true happiness, right? Since my accident, when I knew, it's not even like I had to get well. The doctor said you will never walk, but I wanted to act, which is why I walk. And after that, every single day that I'm working, every single role that I'm doing is like a blessing. Suppose you see a uh, Robert Downey Jr. He's a star. He's a superstar. But you can see him in all his films. He'll have that nonchalance, and even if he's Iron Man, he's got that, you know. selfish if he's in humor and then he does something and he's stylish and he's got a way of doing it but daniel day lewis would be someone i really identify with because he gets into that role and does something different i like to be like that but at the same time i want to also be a tom cruise i want to also be a tom hardy what excites you the most about the next part of thangalan see thangalan is like many stories woven together Wait, and like, you know you have so many stories out there So well, I, I knew they were going to talk sequel. Even, I knew that. I knew that. This can be a story. Or what happens to Tanglan after he finds the gold? What is his understanding with the British? I mean, you have so many stories that are hey, there. Hey, if you need you any breads, any number of parts. What's next for Vikram? I'm doing a film for Veera. I call Veera the Rasooran, and it's by this creator called Arun Kumar, who did uh, Chitta last year, which has been the most acclaimed film of the year. It's a very, very powerful oh, yeah, story and narrated in a very powerful way. And <clears throat> we are doing this film, which is mainstream cinema, but it's going to be so raw. And we are trying to like break into a new genre. We are trying to do something very commercial and very viable on a on a, a market like this, but at the same time, something that's very raw and. Like a slice of life, and I'm really enjoying doing it. How often do you use IMDb, and what has been your experience using it? Anytime we want to watch a film, we go back and check on IMDb. <laughs> like, what do you guys say? Okay, then we go read the comments. You're helping us because we do know what we want to watch and what we can ignore for some time. You guys are a very important uh, factor in our lives. Thank you very much for it. He came up with some really good questions and uh, piqued my curiosity and made me. Going deep inside and talk about me and my films. Tanglan is a film we've all put our hearts, and souls, everything we possess into it. And I'm so happy that I'm in a film that's made people talk, and we are in a film where people are actually sitting up and we've. There is shock and awe in this film. Please contribute to trivia ratings and reviews on IMDb because that's what makes us tick. Mm, nice. So is he method, or is he method adjacent? It's got to be adjacent. Obviously, certain parts are method adjacent. Obviously, the few, body f- body transformation. Yeah, but few few people are. Yeah, full method. Yeah, yeah, because it's almost ridiculous at times. <laughs> uh, obviously, for certain characters, I, I I get it, but you you have to be like the lead, and like it needs yeah. to be a role that's like. You need you need it. Thangalan. I wouldn't shock me if. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't shock me it. if he wanted and needed to stay there for the majority of it. Um, but, but yeah, he definitely it, incorporates method. Process oh yeah, and in a big way. Um, for a lot of his roles, I think it's it's definitely. I would too. Yeah. Um, I would be I'd be method method adjacent for. Yeah, I mean, you kind of depends on the role. You kind of have to. Um, I've I found even if you're not trained, you'll discover actors are going to incorporate the stuff that started with Stanislavski and Strasberg and then Uta Hagen and then Meisner and 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 at some way, shape, or form because those are principles that that just have always existed for people creating characters, mm-hmm. and they were the ones who were able to uh, articulate them in a way that it could be comprehensive for people to know. Oh, this is how I go about doing that, yeah. but. Um, He's clearly an actor's actor. Oh, like, yeah. like he said, he he can very much appreciate the Riz of RDJ and his believability and the cadence and how he brings that to every role. But for him, he prefers the immersiveness of losing self and becoming a completely different being, the way that Daniel Day Lewis does. And, Tom and Hardy. I, yeah, and Tom Hardy, which I, 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 I'm I'm a, a spouser of. I I like both. 
sometimes sometimes a character like the show I just did, Tom is so close to me that I just I was incorporating me as much as possible. I mean, he was ninety percent similar to me. But if I'm playing, uh, there's a lot of other roles where I absolutely cannot be me. It's just not me at all. He's very similar to how like every character pretty much in Barbarian. Yeah, <laughs> he tries. He's very similar to me in terms of, um, or I'm similar to him in terms yeah. of uh, I. When I do, I mean, obviously it depends on the role, of course, always. But I like to change my voice. I like to change how I walk. I just want it keeps it interesting for me. It's I also, very Johnny Depp, Heath Ledger. I also find it easier for me. Yeah. I find it harder to not change anything about myself and to keep my voice. Right. That is something I struggle with, mm. is keeping my own voice Your own speaking in voice. Yeah. Many like, actors have that challenge. Because I'm like, I, it sounds like me. And I many guess. actors have the opposite challenge. Oh, yeah. They can't be anything but themselves. Like, it's easier for me to do a monologue in a voice. In a voice. Than it is for me oh, to do a monologue in my own voice. I recently, I recently auditioned for a, a new contemporized version of Hamlet that they're going to be doing at the, at the Music Center, right? Yeah. So... They said you could do a contemporary monologue or you could do a Shakespearean monologue. Mm -hmm. So I chose the ghost monologue from Hamlet. Yeah. But I made it contemporary in that it was my normal accent, my normal voice. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how disconnected I felt from the text and the character. Yeah. Because every time I've ever done that, it's been the character that I've embodied with that voice and that accent, you know, saying at the very, right from the go, I am thy father's spirit. And now I have to say, I'm your dad. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> very, very strange. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it was, it, it's extremely difficult for me to just play normal. Um, like normal person, normal voice, normal cadence, normal walk. Yeah, it used to be for me. I'm far more comfortable with it now, but there was a period of time for me where. It was, uh, it just, everything felt weird trying to just be me in a role. Yeah. I don't feel that way anymore. I'm more, far more comfortable with it now. And again, there's actors that can't be them, can't be themselves, and there's others that can't be anything but themselves. I don't know if it's like... Like Nic uh, Jack Nicholson is the kind of actor that can't be anything but himself. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Like, I don't know if it's more, it's not uncomfortableness. It's more also just, I find it boring. Hmm. Like when I see a breakdown of like leading man, your everyday type, I'm like, I don't even want to do that. <laughs> right. It sounds extremely boring. To right. Me. Obviously, now I probably wouldn't normally be cast as that. I'm right. not the normal leading man looking type. Right. I'm much more of a, a, character, a character actor supporting. supporting kind of uh, role. And, and you have to know what your type is. But just the breakdowns that I see, I sometimes just don't even submit. I'm like, because yeah. one, you're probably not going to pick me. Two, that sounds awful. Right. I don't like the sound of this character at all. Right. Like the good guy. Right. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> the good That's... guy, dad, neighbor next door. <laughs> Shoot you now. I did get um <laughs> I did get uh, a callback for something a while ago and it was I'm pretty sure I didn't get it, but um and it was just a normal dad. Uh <laughs> and it, I got a callback for it. Right. Um I did change my voice to different than my own voice. Right. But um, that was the closest I came to playing a, yeah. no, a normal guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't like it! Uh, Vikram, but too. We love Vikram. Yeah, love Vikram, man. Uh, what should be our next Vikram film? Uh, got a bunch. Got a bunch. I know. <laughs> I is in there, too. Yeah. I know it's not, he's like, he's, I mean, he might be like flexing muscles. I know it's not like an, an a, like a, no. Thangalan style right. film, right? Or PS definitely two. a massier film because yeah. I think he plays multiple characters in in I. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Um, well, I, I'd like to see the one that's the remake of I Am Sam. I'd, I'm very interested we, in I that. I think we saw a monologue from that in the courtroom. Okay, um, you guys, but you guys is it any good? Especially those of you who've seen both I Am Sam, which, by the way, incredible film. Sean Penn's amazing in I Am Sam. Um, anyways, let us know. Down below. Juice!